Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Dolan here again. I'm going to show you another projectile calculation question, everybody's favorite uh, type of calculation. A lot of work on some of these, I realize that, uh, but you can do this. I have faith in that, so I, I want to just give you some help here. Uh, so this was from one of our homework assignments. It is the question about a monkey trying to throw a banana up um, to his friend who is in a tree. Um, if you read the question carefully, we see that the friend is five meters above the ground or on a branch that's five meters above the ground. And what we're trying to do is figure out, did the monkey throw the banana with enough speed and angle to get the banana high enough? So what we know about the banana is that it was up at an angle of 60 degrees and it had a velocity of 10, let's put this here, 10 meters per second. Okay, so that's what we know about the banana. Now we're going to make an assumption here to make life a little bit easier. We could go really complicated on this one if we really wanted to, um, but we're going to assume that the banana starts on the ground. Okay, so here's our banana. We're going to assume the banana is on the ground. Friend is up in the tree, right? Here's our branch. And we're trying to figure out if this banana was launched at an angle of 60 degrees. Again, think of X and Y coordinates where this would be X and this would be Y. If this was launched at 60, we're closer to straight up and down than we are to side to side. So 60 degrees and at 10 meters per second. would it make it high enough? So remember what we do in physics and with projectiles is we make that into a triangle. We're gonna use this triangle to figure out our VY and our VX for the banana. And we're going to start filling in an X and a Y chart that shows us what numbers we have and keeps things organized for us because when we do calculations on projectiles we have to remember that the numbers we use in the equations have to either be all x numbers or they have to be all y numbers you can't mix and match the two um, so if you think about what this question is asking this question is asking does the d the distance from the ground to the branch or the ground to the highest part of the banana's throw does that get high enough? So this is a dy that we're looking for, okay? And we're basically seeing if the dy is bigger or smaller than five. If it's bigger than five, the monkey friend can catch it. If it's smaller than five, it doesn't quite make it high enough. So let's go about and do that. Uh, so we know vy, oh, I forgot, 60 degrees, okay. Um, so remember, VY is the opposite, so we're going to use sine to find the opposite side. So sine of 60 degrees equals VY over 10 meters per second. So calculate that on my calculator, 10 times the sine of 60. Again, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. VY then equals 8.66 meters per second. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the X, the VX. Okay, we don't know what we need yet, what we don't know. But we do know that VX is the adjacent side, and the adjacent side of a triangle uses cosine. So cosine of 60 degrees equals VX over 10 meters per second. Okay, so 10 times cosine of 60, and we get, Five. Vx equals five. Now where does the banana have these speeds? Right at the beginning when it's thrown. Okay, so these are our V1s. So V1 for x is five meters per second. V1 for y is my 8.66 meters per second. Right, and I'm gonna put on here that we're looking for a dy. I'm going to put that at the bottom here. That's what we're looking for. So let's start listing in other things that we know. We know the acceleration. We always know the acceleration. Acceleration in the x direction is always going to be zero 
because we pretend there's no air resistance and no air resistance means nothing can slow it down in the side to side direction. We do know, however, that gravity is constantly trying to pull it down and gravity always pulls down with an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, well, what else do we know? This question is really trying to ask, does the banana go up five meters or not? So we're really looking for the peak, right? So what do we know about the peak? We know for the X, doesn't change. If the acceleration is zero, then the peak velocity is also five meters per second. However, for the velocity of the y direction, remember y is up and down, at some point at the peak, it stops rising. What does that mean for velocity in the up and down direction? It means the velocity is zero. And so at the peak, the velocity for y is zero meters per second. Now you'll notice, again, what do we have missing? We don't have a time. And again, a lot of projectile questions, the equation that really is useful for you is going to have time in it. In fact, if you look at almost all of our equations, they have time. So we're looking for a dy, which means we probably need y numbers for that equation. Um, we look at our equations, and we're probably going to go back to this equation here. dy equals v1 times t plus 1 half times a times t squared. Okay, we already have the a, negative 9.8, and we already have the v1, 8.66. We don't have as the t. So let's figure out which side has enough information to find t. And on both of these, we could use these numbers at the peak as a V2. So we have a V1, we have an A, and we have a V2, and we're looking for T. Well, there's an equation that'll find that for us. So look at your equation sheets. There's that equation that says V2 equals V1 plus A times T, right? So... How do we do that? Well, do we want to use the X numbers or do we want to use the Y numbers? Hmm. Well, let's look at this. If your X acceleration is a zero, that means A here is going to be a zero. What's zero times T? Zero. And V2 and V1 are the same, five and five. So you're basically just proving that five equals five. <laughs> um, that's not going to help you find T if we're using the X numbers. So here we're going to want to use the Y numbers. So our V2, what did we say at the peak? So our V2, that's going to be zero. So zero equals V1, which is 8.66 meters per second, plus our A times T. Well, our A is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared times T. Okay, well, I've got to do a little rearranging here. Um, Order of operations tells me I'm going to have to bring this 8.66 to the other side first. So I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to have a negative 8.66 equals, I'm actually going to put the units there, meters per second equals a negative 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by time. To get time by itself, divide both sides by the 9.8 meters per second squared. Plug that into my calculator, 8.66 divided by 9.8, and I get this number here for time. Time equals, notice, the negatives all canceled out. So I forgot to put the negatives there. The negatives all canceled out, so I'm going to have 0.88. I'm going to round here on the fourth one. 0.884 seconds. Is that my final answer? No. That number, remember, is what we needed to figure out distance. Okay, now I have enough numbers to solve for my distance equation in the y direction. So again, I start plugging my stuff in. V1 is 8.66. 
to make the numbers a little easier to see, I'm not going to put units, times, I'm going to put a little time sign, 0.884 seconds, that's from my time here, plus one half times a, don't forget the negative on this, 9.8 times 0.884 squared. So go through, plug some stuff in. PEMDAS is going to be very important here. Got to do the exponent first, then do all your multiplying stuff, right? And then finally add those together. So let me start plugging those in. I got 0 0.884 squared powers out and exponents. I always go before everything else. And then I can do my multiplying. So that number times my negative 9.8 times my 0.5 or 1 half. That gives me a negative 3.829, some other numbers. I'll put my plus sign in there. And now I got to do this part right here. 8.66 times 0.8. 884, and I get 7.656. So my dy equals that plus that, or in this case, subtracting. So minus 7.656 minus 3.829, and we get a number something like this 3.826. Go back, what are the units on this? Well, this is a distance. How is distance measured? Look at your velocity number. The distance was in meters. You look at your acceleration. The distance was in meters. So this one's going to be in meters. Now, be careful. Is this the answer to the question? The answer is actually no. We need to use that number to answer the question. The question is, this is how high the monkey threw the banana. Is that high enough? His friend is five meters up. This is not as big as five meters, which means the banana if the branches up here. The banana doesn't quite make it. So the answer to this one would be no. If you have any questions, again, please send those my way. I'm happy to help you out. I hope this was helpful.